So what's going on guys, Kades here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the best Path of Exile class guide in 2024. So this game in general has a bunch of fun classes to play and we have very unique variety to choose from. But the big question is, which classes and ascendancies are actually good for the specific activities that you want to do. So I've done a bunch of testing and here are the strengths and weaknesses of each class and much more. And just before we get into it, let me quickly explain how this class system works in PoE. So Path of Exile uses three main attributes which are Strength, Dexterity and Intelligence. And overall there are seven playable main classes, that each has three more subclasses known as Ascendancies. Ascendancies are more general specializations of what kind of character you want to be. So for example the Deadeye specializes in manipulating projectiles. This means that he can use any projectile. And not just those that come from a bow, but there are tons of other spells that fire projectiles as well. So with all of this out of the way, now let's get right into it. So then moving over to the first main class and it is the Marauder. This is the Path of Exile's pure strength class, which means that he's great at taking hits and even better at dishing out serious damage. His mainly skills encompass a wide range of assault, from massive single target damage to devastating AoE damage. This brute of a man bolsters his impressive physical arsenal, with variety of shouts and cries, and even more powerful unique skills that rally his allies and strike terror into the hearts of his enemies. Marauder can specialize into three ascendancies, called the Juggernaut, Berserker or the Chieftain. The Juggernaut is the main tank class, that possesses endurance charge generation and bunch of bonuses like health boost to armor or damage mitigation and protection against slows or stuns. His class skill tree also offers some offensive bonuses like accuracy and stun effects. Overall the Juggernaut is a plate wall of defense that is also a great pick for a league starter. Then next up we have the Berserker. This is an offensive oriented class that gears towards being in the heat of a battle with skills that offer unparalleled power at the downside, so berserkers can build around rage and make it even more powerful at the cost of life reduction with the right of ruin, or perhaps you can trade consistent critical strike chance for faster attacks with blitz. Or on top of all of this you can gain straight up more damage by sacrificing vulnerability with the aspect of carnage. This class also offers bonuses to leech and far cry skills. So overall the Berserker is your main melee damage dealer, with all out damage and attack speed bonuses. So he's basically your straightforward Berserker from any other MMO. And then lastly we have the Chieftain. This class is focused around fire damage and totems. The class offers a wide variety of effects revolving around fire damage, with damage bonuses by using conversion, penetration and covering enemies with ash. They can even enhance their totems to weaken the nearby enemies or life leech from them. This class also offers a wide variety of sources of life regeneration and life leech, as well as endurance charge regeneration, making the chieftain surprisingly tough to kill in the heat of a combat. Overall this class uses totems and fire damage slash dots. The chieftain is slow and tanky, but he has a lot of strength stacking. So then moving over to the second main class and it is the dualist. This is the Path of Exile's strength slash dexterity hybrid class, which makes him unmatched at dealing and avoiding damage. He can effectively use a shield, but is equally comfortable slashing away with a powerful two-hander, or fighting with weapons in both hands. His powerful arms can draw the strings of the heaviest and most lethal longbows. His highly honed reflexes give him a cat-like ability to dodge and parry incoming attacks. The duelist is a daunting foe and his reputation as a ruthless killer is well deserved. In general he can specialize into three ascendancies called the Slayer, Gladiator or Champion. The Slayer is an offensive oriented class based around various attacks. He is effective boss killer with headmast and bane of legend skills, but he also gains access to defensive bonuses involving life leech and the ability to leech beyond his maximum health pool. He also possesses bonuses towards AoE damage and critical strike attack builds, as well as masterful form for maximizing frenzy and endurance charges. Overall the Slayer is well known for cunning and leeching ascendancy, giving him the ability to instantly kill an endgame boss under 20% HP. Then the Gladiator is an ascendancy with a mixture of speed, power and protection, revolving around certain stats. 
It covers two primary niches, one which is focused around maximizing block effectiveness and the second one which enhances bleed with auxiliary effects. This class also covers dual wielding and sand stance bonuses. So overall the gladiator is your bleed and block ascendancy. That unfortunately has seen better days, so I don't recommend it for the current patch. And then lastly we have the champion. This is a mixture of defense and offense, and even support type of class, that can act as a tank for his party by debuffing enemies through taunts and impales or by buffing allies with all the enchanted banners, or even by intimidating skill that debuffs enemies to reduce their defenses. He bolsters his own defenses with fortify, including the ability to permanently fortify himself, or gain a burst of adrenaline, or increase damage and defenses. Overall this class is one of the best for league starters, because it has very easy access to strong defensive skills and makes leveling and early mapping very fast and enjoyable. I highly recommend to use this class for a newer player. So then for the third main class we have the Ranger. This is the pure dexterity class, which benefits her slim and graceful appearance. She is agile and fast, darting in and out of combat to deliver vicious critical strikes that often kill her enemies in a single blow. Her natural quickness grant her a powerful ability to avoid damage through high evasion and she tends to equip herself with light leather and clothes. She has a tremendous proficiency with ranged weapons but can also wield a sword in a battle. In general, a bow focused ranger is very good at applying damage to enemies, both at long and short range. Arguably, this is the best range class in the game. Rangers can specialize into three ascendancies called Deadeye, Raider or the Pathfinder. The Deadeye is an offensive oriented class, focused around projectile skills and modifying them to enhance their power. While bow builds have obvious synergies with the Deadeye, a wand and a projectile spell build can also easily benefit from the utility the class provides. Ricochet and the endless mutation skills give the class convenient access to chain and additional projectiles. An occupying force modifies Mirage Archer support to give more damage potential, and far shot skill enhances long range combat which makes the barrage shots effect at long range. They also have access to bonuses related to marks and bleed damage for crit builds. Overall this is a very powerful projectile based class that focuses around speed and multiplier stats. Then for the second one we have the Raider. This class is focused on speed and evasion that's centered around frenzy charges, onslaught or phasing effects. The class nodes will provide practically permanent uptime on these effects while other nodes will further enhance the bonuses they give. Avatar of the Chase gives the Onslaught a huge bonuses to attack speed, movement speed and evade chance, while the Avatar of the Slaughter gives Frenzy charges a bigger variety of bonuses and much more. Overall the Raider is a speed ascendancy that feels incredibly nice to run at the end game because of how fast it can move, attack and cast effects. And then lastly we have the Pathfinder. This class focal point is her flasks which she uses with increased effectiveness. Many of the Pathfinder skills can converse or gain extra flask charges, which gives flasks additional offensive or defensive effects while they're active or protect them from harmful elements. Her remaining skills enhance the elemental damage, chaos damage or poison. The Pathfinder is a flexible class that benefits both from spells and attack builds, but especially from ones that uses damage conversion. Overall this class is your poison and flask ascendancy that has strong defensive and quality of life with automatic poison spread, so this is a strong choice for a league starter. So then for the next class we have the Shadow. This is the Path of Exiles dexterity slash intelligence hybrid class. He prefers to use fast hitting weapons such as daggers or claws to dart in and out of the battle while laying traps or mines and controlling the flow of combat. He makes surgical use of the offensive spells while dodging attacks and always making sure to outmaneuver his enemies. The Shadow is one of the more difficult classes to play, because of how fragile he is, but he more than makes up for it if you use it correctly. His hit and run style of combat makes the most out of his natural evasion and energy shields, and rewards strategic coordination of attacks, spells and even traps. The Shadow has three ascendancies called the Assassin, Saboteur or Trickster. The Assassin is an offensive oriented class, centered around critical strikes. The class offers skills that enhance their power charges 
and bonuses to critical strike effectiveness and utility under certain conditions. Furthermore, with the Mistwalker, the assassin has the ability to gain elusive buff on critical strikes and additional benefits, while not being affected by it. Overall, the assassin is amazing at crit damage, because of how easy this class can solve, not having enough crit problem for most builds without even trying. Then the Saboteur specializes in traps and mines. With Grenade Specialist and Demolition Specialist effects, he gains large bonuses towards mines, where Perfect Crime and Chain Reaction furthermore enhances the traps. This class has access to Blinding Aura and further benefits against blinded enemies via Born in the Shadows, as well as Life Regeneration and Reduction Mana Cost, or traps and mines via the Paramanic. Last but not the least, Explosive Expert allows for larger damage bonuses versus enemies which are affected by multiple elemental ailments at the same time. Overall, this class focuses on mines and traps, but also cooldown reduction, which is a very rare stat, making the trigger builds easier to get into. And then lastly, we have the Trickster. The Trickster is a versatile hybrid class that mixes high speed, maneuverability, and slippery defenses. He is well suited for damage over time builds with his strong recovery from the Patient Reaper and further damage over time specializations, like the Poison via Prolonged Pain. The Trickster also gains added layers of defenses to his Evasion and Energy Shield. Furthermore, he is able to generate an enhanced power and Frenzy Charges either from killing enemies or channeling an ability with a Swift Killer. Overall, this is a defensive ascendancy, with access to a lot of QOL, then he's unable to be slowed, and he can easily regain HP, mana and energy shields after each kill. Then for one of the last main classes, we have the Witch. This is a pure intelligence class, which makes her an unmatched master of the elemental and dark arts. She builds the power of raw magic to decimate her foes from a distance. Her tremendous will surrounds her with a shimmering barrier against physical and magical attacks, a barrier that must first be pierced before the witch herself is vulnerable. In addition to pure damage-based magic, the witch can also cripple and kill her enemies with curses and diseases. Witches can specialize into three ascendancies called the Necromancer, Elementalist and Occultist. The Necromancy is an ascendancy class themed around the undead. They are an excellent choice for minion-based builds, having access to minion enchanting skills as well as bonuses related to auras and offering skills. They also have skills based around corpses, gaining powerful bonuses from swapping and consuming corpses, which makes them pair well with corpse-based skills that double your damage from every single enemy corpse. Overall, as you can tell, this is the class where you can control minions and they will do all the damage for you. Then we have the Elementalist that deals in all things elemental. They can enhance the power of elemental ailments to be more powerful, even against bosses, and make them compatible with other damage types. They also have access to Mastermind of Discord to make the elemental exposure more powerful. Heart of Destruction to gain powerful conditional offensive bonuses and Bastion of Element skills to ward off against elemental damage. Finally, he has even access to Golem-related skills which not only enhance their survivability, but also give bigger enhancements to your own character the more golems you have activated. Overall, this class focuses on elemental damage and elemental effects, including Ignite, Freeze and Shock. And then finally, we have the Occultist, that specializes in Cold and Chaos dot effects, as well as Curses, with the minor affinity for both Energy Shield and Power Charges. This class is capable of reliably generating set power charges, without needing to trigger an on-kill effect using the forbidden power. The next up we have the Templar, which is a strength slash intelligence hybrid class. He has three ascendancies called the Inquisitor, Hierophant and Guardian. The Inquisitor is mainly all about enchanting elemental damage in very different ways. He can among other things specialize in critical strikes with righteous province and inevitable judgment skills. Overall, the Inquisitor is elemental damage and crit focused. He has easy access to crit through intelligence and strength stats. And on top of this, crits will ignore enemy resistances. Then next up we have the Hierophant, which offers a mixture of non-conventional sources of damage and overall utility aimed towards spell users, particularly spell casting totems and brands. They can utilize a large mana pool effectively by converting it to offensive and defensive bonuses 
while also conserving and generating it. They can also utilize Arcane Surge, with large bonuses to spellcasters attached to it. And finally we have the Guardian. This is a powerful option for a tank slash support, or minion based Templar, that possesses passives with an emphasis on enchanting and protecting his allies. Guardians can specialize in auras, granting up to 4 additional unique and powerful defensive auras to their party or allies. Furthermore, he can speed up his allies with Onslaught and give the ability to intimidate and unnerve enemies on hit to reduce their defenses. Overall, the Guardian is a support class most used with minions and which is a little bit more tankier than the Necromancer. And then last but not least, we have the Scion class. She is aligned with all three core attributes, which are Strength, Dexterity and Intelligence. This unique position allows her to develop into almost any type of character build. Because of her high learning curve, she is initially unavailable to a new player. The player must rescue the Scion who can be found in the final area of the Tower of the God, just before the fight with the final boss of this act. Killing the boss is not required to free the Scion. This can be done on any league to unlock her as accessible character. The Scion has only one Ascendancy, that you can specialize in and it's called the Ascendant. The Ascendant offers more flexibility than any other class, by allowing the player to take passives based on other classes. These passives offer similar benefits, representing the class overall tree, but with mitigated effects. Only one Ascendancy class passive can be taken from each base class. The Ascendant can allocate up to two Ascendancy class passives and can further invest onto one's class path. To gain the ability to use that class starting point on the passive skill tree as a second starting point. So with that said, I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good PoE builds or guides that you would like to see in the next video, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you can support the channel and not miss any more amazing content. With all this said, you have an amazing day and I will catch you in my next video. So take it easy. Peace.